Hey guys, it's Dr. Kamel. Now we're going to continue on with our ultrasound series and I'm going to discuss with you today how you can use an ultrasound to identify the structures of the tarsal tunnel as well as trace the posterior tubule tendon into the foot. Now it's important to be able to use an ultrasound because it, it is able to give you a quick diagnosis in your office of why someone might be experiencing tarsal tunnel syndrome. Now the structures of the tarsal tunnel can be found in the medial compartment of the ankle and I'm going to show you guys how you can identify those structures as well as any pathologies related to it. Tarsal tunnel syndrome can be caused by space occupying lesions such as lipomas or synovial cysts and the ultrasound is very good at identifying those things. Now the posterior tibial tendon has its role in flat foot deformities and we want to be able to use the ultrasound to identify that structure from the tarsal tunnel all the way into the foot and into its attachment. All right guys, now I'm gonna show you guys how you can use an ultrasound to identify the structures of the medial compartment of the ankle, as well as identify the posterior tibial tendon and trace it all the way down to its insertion. So right away, right here, I have the patient with uh, their hip externally rotated, I have good exposure of the medial side of the ankle. I have the probe in the axial view, um, spanning the tibia to the calcaneus. And right there, you can see hugging the tibia is the posterior tibial tendon. You could also see the flexor hallucis longus as well as the flexor digitorum longus. And you could even see a pulsating vessel there. That is your posterior tibial artery. And the honeycomb appearance nearby there is the tibial nerve. And I'll explain some of this stuff later on in some of the images. But, um, and encapsulating all of those, you can see a ligamental structure that is the er, er, sort of a fibular structure uh, that is the uh, flexor retinaculum it encapsulate all of those so there you can see it and if you see any pathologies we'll explain later how those pathologies will appear so we'll go in the long axis and we'll trace the posterior tibial tendon so there you can see it again hugging up against the tibia and orientation is especially important for this view because in one, a little bit of rotation, you may or may not see it. So here you can see visible, not visible. All right, there we go. So we trace it, we'll trace the tendon. You can see it there, right into, there we go, right into the insertion and then just trace it back. And with this patient, everything appears to be normal. But I'll show you guys right now uh, some images with some pathology to help you uh, when you use ultrasound to identify these, uh, these bits of anatomy. Thanks. Here you can see a sonographic image of the medial retromalleolar area obtained in the axial oblique plane. Superficial to the bone, moving from the anterior to the posterior, one can see the tibialis posterior tendon, which is indicated with the green circle, the flexor digitorum longus tendon, indicated by the purple circle, the neurovascular bundle, which you can see the red for the artery, the posterior tibial artery, the blue for the, the posterior tibial vein, and the yellow indicating the tibial nerve. And you can also see that the short arrows with the orange strip is what appears as a thin echogenic band. And this is the uh, flexor retinaculum, which is superficial to all of these structures. Here is another sonographic image of the medial retromalleolar area obtained in the axial oblique plane. Now you can see uh, the first thing is the posterior tibial artery, which is indicated with the red, the tibial nerve indicated in the yellow, the flexor hallucis longus tendon indicated in the purple. Now, this tendon is in the tarsal canal and it's resting on the surface of the talus. The tendon is easily uh, identifiable because of the presence of the effusion fluid in the joint, uh, indicated by the asterisk and the light blue circle. Anteriorly, the retromalleolar zone, the tendons of the tibialis posterior in the green, and the flexor digitorum longus muscles um, indicated in the orange can be identified. Now going back to the tubule nerve, um, it's, you're able to identify that this as the nerve because of its um, classic honeycomb-like appearance. Now what does honeycomb-like mean? Honeycomb 
It reveals small hypoechoic areas or dark areas separated by hyperechoic septi, which is the white. Here you can see a long axis view of the posterior tibial tendon as it's passing by the medial malleolus. Uh, the green indicates the posterior tibial tendon, and you can see that it has its characteristic normal fibrillar architecture. The arrow and the blue indicate the medial malleolus. Now if you trace the posterior tibial tendon distally along its course, you can see uh, this is a normal posterior tibial tendon that is uh, inserting into the navicular. Now if you were to evaluate the posterior tibial tendon in the axial view, you can see that it is circular. In this particular case, you can see that it is an enlarged inhomogeneous tendon with peritendon effusion, which is consistent with posterior tibial tendinosis. Now, if this tendon is traced along its course in the longitudinal axis, you can see that it, it maintains the normal fibrillar architecture. However, you can see a circular hypoechoic space that is the minimal fluid that is coming from adjacent to the posterior tibial tendon, which is uh, consistent with posterior tibial tendonitis. Tarsal tunnel syndrome can be caused by any condition that causes compression to the tibial nerve or its branches as it passes through the tarsal tunnel. A wide variety of conditions can cause tarsal tunnel syndrome, including space occupying lesions or masses, which may increase the pressure in the tunnel. Such lesions include um, lipomas or synovial or ganglion cysts and tumors of the nerve sheath, such as uh, schwannomas. In this image, you can see the tibial nerve that has the classic honeycomb appearance, as well as the FHL, and a synovial cyst or a ganglion cyst that is from the FHL that is causing compression around the tibial nerve, which can give you uh, signs and symptoms uh, such as burning and numbness and tingling in the uh, plantar aspect of the foot. So ultrasound becomes useful in patients with tarsal tunnel syndrome, and you can easily identify uh, what the etiology is. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm excited for the next video on this ultrasound series, so stay tuned, you guys. Thanks.